Come on, clap your hands and give the Lord praise tonight. Come on, you can do better than that. Give the Lord a praise tonight. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. I am excited to be here. Amen. For the very first time. And it's good to have, amen, Minister Adrian McKinnis traveling. Amen. He obliged us and drive us over. Amen. Come on, put your hands together for him. In the name of the Lord. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20. Amen. Uh, Paul was writing to the brethren of Ephesus, to the brethren of Ephesus. And he lets us know, he says, Now unto him. Uh, th that is very important. Now unto him. Who is that him? Now unto him. Jesus Christ that is able to do exceedingly. Uh, he starts off with exceedingly and then he goes abundantly and then he says above all, above everything that you can imagine or think, Paul says he's able to do above that that we may ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Father, we need your blessings tonight. Speak to us like only your Lord can. It is in you we live and move and have our being. We thank you for this spot of ground. We thank you for this inaugural convocation. Father, we pray your blessing upon it tonight. Move by your power. Let uh, this community, let this city know that there is a church here that preaches the name of Jesus. Move in this place. Subdue every force. Subdue every principality. Everything that seeks uh, to exalt itself above the name of Jesus. Uh, Father, we pray tonight uh, that we will come into subjection of your power tonight. Have your way in this house. Andosha. Have your way in this house. We plead the blood up the road, down the road, across the road. Oh God, in every area of this community, draw somebody, draw them, draw them, draw them, draw them, draw them from their house. Draw them as they pass by. Draw them. Let there be a glory that shines from this house. Have your way, Jesus. Somebody say in Jesus' name. I want you to turn to your neighbor and grab them by the hand and look them in the eye. And simply, I want you to tell them no limits, no boundaries. He's able to do. I want you to shake them and tell them no limits, no boundaries. Say it one more time. No limits. No boundaries. Tell him God is able. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Katoshana. No limits or no boundaries. One thing we are assured of tonight that God is able to do. Uh, one of the most interesting things if you uh, study the book of Ephesians and we, we believe that in preaching we must give you uh, a little bit of information. So I want to spend about five minutes and, and just give you a little bit of information and we can go further on tomorrow night in the book of Ephesians. But when we read the book of Ephesians, Paul uh, was writing to uh, the brethren at Ephesus. Ephesians can be uh, divided into two parts. Uh, from chapter 1 to chapter 3, if you read it carefully, uh, Paul begins to talk to us uh, concerning the, the wealth of the believer. 
Uh, as a believer, Paul introduces us to the inheritance that we have in Christ Jesus. He tells us that we are seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. And not only that, but Paul also tells us as the believer to them that receive the Holy Ghost that you are sealed. The Bible says, having this sealed, the Lord knoweth them that are is. Those that have the Holy Ghost, uh, you must realize that it's like a down payment on your life. When Jesus gives you the Holy Ghost, he says, I now own you. you you belong to me you are mine and I am his if you go back to the olden days when they wanted to know the animals they will brand them and they will put a seal on them and no matter where they were once they saw that brand that number they know that that particular animal belongs to to that particular individual what Jesus is now saying when I give you the Holy Ghost uh, uh, you, you, you are mine you're not just mine you are 100% mine uh, somebody who have the Holy Ghost uh, lift your hands and, and say God I thank you that I belong to you uh, yeah, son, uh, I'm not just to anybody I am somebody and in me dwelleth the Holy Ghost the Bible says Christ in me the hope of glory and so when you have the Holy Ghost you are empowered when you have the Holy Ghost it allows you to do things and to speak those things that are not as though they are I dear somebody to look around in this first uh, inaugural convocation uh, and say Lord enlarge uh, our bodies uh, oh I came here to preach tonight because uh, we don't want to get comfortable uh, just thinking uh, that this is it uh, if you call me here to preach now unto him uh, God is not saying tomorrow but he's saying right now uh, that he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all all we could ever ask or think it simply means that within a few days God can trip this very congregation because he's able to do it shake somebody in and tell him God is able he's able he's able I need to stretch across to somebody and say he's able now have a seat before we shout because we got to preach this thing and preach it good pastor no Paul now uh, does not only talk to us about the wealth uh, of the believer uh, but Paul wants to ensure also uh, that as a believer that we are grounded in God uh, and so Paul moves from the wealth of the believer uh, and he begins to talk about the walk of the believer uh, Paul says in our walk uh, that we must walk in unity uh, if we are going to get this done uh, praise sanctuary we've got to be unified behind the vision of the pastor if he's leading us we're going with him if he's saying one thing we're saying in the same thing he says we have to be unified not only that Paul says that we must walk in purity in other words our lives must match our testimony our lives must match our words the Bible says it's by the fruits that you shall know them your testimony will only be effective if the life that you live matches up to your testimony people who believe 
speaking if you don't live what you say and say what you live am I talking to the real house tonight somebody lift your hands and say help me Jesus somebody say help me Lord I don't want to just be a talker but James says you must be a doer of the word not only just a hearer of the word but to be a doer of the word and so if I testify holy and I testify righteous I must walk in right living it means then I cannot be here and I'm not talking to my neighbor I cannot be here and I'm angry at everybody else no 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 I've got to get it right I've got to greet my neighbor greet my brother and sister and said I love you with the love of the Lord am I preaching to somebody look at your neighbor and say neighbor I don't care if you hate me I love you and I'm going to love on you until you can't stand it I'm going to love you until I can't find any capacity to love but I'm a lover of God's people and there any lover of God's people in here tonight somebody shout a hallelujah now have a seat let's talk I hope I got about 20 more minutes pastor now watch Paul Paul now brings us to a place that we must examine all of us take our Bibles in our hands now we must examine this before we get to the shouting part in chapter 3 of your text Paul now starts out by saying for this cause he says I Paul the prisoner of Jesus Christ for the Gentiles what Paul was now saying here that he's a prisoner to the gospel he is chained to the gospel in other words I cannot get up and say I don't feel like no 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 you are a prisoner to this even when you don't feel like it you still gotta praise him even when you can't feel like you want to get up and go down to pray sanctuary you gotta get up and get to the house of God because you're held captive by the gospel of Jesus Christ look at your neighbor and say neighbor it's not about the messenger it's about the message and the message is Jesus Christ it's not about the deliverer of the message it's about the messenger and Jesus is about the ones who sends the message and Jesus says if I be lifted up from this earth I will draw all men unto him can somebody lift up Jesus somebody lift up Jesus it's all about Jesus he says I'm a prisoner I'm at I move and I do what God says even if in my flesh I don't like it but my spirit says I've got to do what God says and so in this first inaugural convocation we announce to the city that praise sanctuary is here to stay because Jesus says upon this rock I build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church of the living God and no weapon that is formed against the church shall prosper and every tongue that rise in judgment God says I'll take them now I come by here to tell somebody there is no limit there is no boundaries to where God is about to take this ministry is there a person that believe God stretch out your hand and say no limits stamp your feet and 
to no limits. Rock yourself and to no limits. Jump and to no limits. We are God. It's about to take this ministry. There is no limits. I need to walk under your seat. Find three people and prophesy to them. And I want to tell you there is no limits. There is no boundary. What God is about to do. He's going to bless us. He's going to multiply us. He's going to make a way out of no way. He's going to bless us. He's going to deliver us. He's going to provide for this ministry. I speak over this ministry. I speak in the womb of this ministry. And I prophesy over this house that there is no limits that there is no boundaries. We call forth the men and the women to be saved in Jesus' name. We speak into the rumble. We speak into the prostitute house. We speak unto the wayward. And we say no limits. We sound the alarm in Rochester. We sound the alarm from the sanctuary. No limits. No boundaries. Unstoppable. I feel like I gotta preach it here. Lean on somebody and tell them this ministry is unstoppable because Jesus is at the head of this ministry. And if God is here, it's unstoppable. Slap your seat and say unstoppable. And sit up for a few more minutes. I feel good up in here. Unstoppable, 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 unstoppable. Somebody say unstoppable and take your seat. We've got to say a few more things. Have a seat. Let's talk. When you got time to study Ephesians, Ephesians really, it's not for the babies. This is not the baby chapter. You know those who desire the sincere milk? This is not Ephesians. Ephesians is a chapter where Paul now speaks to those who understand their position in God. Can I talk to the church? Listen. Authority will not come until you understand uh, and you know uh, your positioning. Uh, when you are positioned, uh, then you are authorized uh, to speak. Uh, and once you are authorized uh, and you open your mouth, uh, something uh, got to happen. Uh, I believe uh, with all my heart uh, that this ministry uh, was authorized uh, by the Holy Ghost. Uh, it was not a fly by night. Uh, it was not an accident but God has authorized it and because he has signed it and sealed it we are authorized to declare that when they pass it through the waters he will be with thee we are authorized to declare that the Lord is my keeper the law is the shame upon thy right hand we are authorized to declare that the law is my deliverer and my provider we are authorized to declare that the enemy has lost we are authorized to declare that no demon no high place no witch no warlock is able to stand against us. We are authorized to tear down every kingdom of darkness. We are authorized to come against every evil force. We are authorized to come against every powers that fight against this ministry. We are authorized to declare that Jesus is in charge. We are authorized to declare that this is the Church of the Living God, we are authorized. 
I will see this story. And so Paul says, I'm a prisoner to this thing. I am chained to this thing. And as a prisoner, mm -hmm, I can't do what I feel. I am told what I ought to do. <laughs> so he now sends you into places. <laughs> sends you into places that your flesh don't want to go. Have a see with that talk first. First complication. Why couldn't he send us into a different community? Hakushanda. Why did he send us to this location? As a prisoner, he now positions you through his omniscience. The fact that he knows all things and knows what the community needs. He cannot send a person that don't have the spirit and the mentality to deal with this community. I am a man, the Okosaya. He had a send a set of people who know how to smile and who know how to give a happy face, who know how to communicate and to reach people. He couldn't send somebody who's going to come in here with a machete and a cutlass. No, he got to send somebody with a calm spirit. But yet in the Holy Ghost, they're as powerful as anything can be. That's why he sent you. Nobody else could come because of the spirit that you possess, because of the humility that you possess, because of the understanding that you possess, because of the training. So God sees it in his omniscience and said, I gotta put my cue down there. He come out of Jamaica. He's been through rough patches and rough places. He understands roughness. So if I put him in this place, even if like Jeremiah, nobody getting saved, but I understand what it is to wait upon the Lord. They that wait, I feel I got to preach it here, upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like an eagle. They shall walk and not be weary. They shall run and not fail. Teach me, Lord. Have a seat. Let's talk. Sorry, give me about 10 more minutes. Have a serious talk. So, this church must now understand that you are chained to deliver the gospel in this place. God don't care if you don't want to. He says you have to. Because I set you there and I saw that you would have struggles. I saw that it would be rough. I saw that you will be criticized. I know that you will be talked about. But weeping may endure for a night. But joy coming in the morning. God bless you, sir.
You want us to pray for you? Come over here. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Kato Shanda. Lift your hands. Lift up your hands. Holy Ghost. Father, you promise to draw Touch him tonight. The blood of Jesus. Deliver him from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. I speak the word. I speak salvation. I speak Jesus. 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 Save him. Save him. Save him. Save him. Save him. Jesus name. Give him a seat to sit down right there. Sit down there, sir. Sit down over there. Kotola Mohosha. Andabakosha. Put him to sit down. Andosha. We have the authority. They must come from the street. They must come from the rumba. They must come from wherever they are. Because this is the saving station. I feel the Holy Ghost. This is the anointed house. This is a place of deliverance. This is a place of victory. Rest your hand on somebody. That's a deliverance. Has come tonight. Deliverance. Have a seat, let's talk. Uh, uh, give me a few more minutes. Have a seat, everybody. Koshan. I, I'll finish it tomorrow. Koshan. Hallelujah. Kusha. Tamakase. Telemundo. Here what Paul says in verse 13 of Ephesians 3 he says wherefore I desire that he faint not at my tribulations for you which is your glory for this cause I bow my knees unto the father of our Lord Jesus Christ Paul be continues to speak and he says that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. Somebody touch yourself and say strength. 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 Hushan. Strength. God knows that would get weak. He knows that would have some situations that causes us to grow weary and want to give up some time and want to pack it in. But hug yourself uh, and say strength. Uh, I speak strength uh, into my now. Uh, I speak strength uh, into my today. Uh, I speak strength uh, into my tomorrow. Uh, I speak strength uh, in my house. Uh, I send it right there. Uh, I speak it. Uh, uh, strength in the name of Jesus I declare tonight that I will not give up I declare tonight that the road is rough and the going gets tough and the hills are hard to climb but I speak strength devil I rebuke you in the name of Jesus back up with your discouragement back up with your discouragement back up of this ministry back up with discouragement
encouragement. I speak strength tonight. I feel the Holy Ghost. I speak strength to those who are growing weak. I speak strength to those who feel like running and giving up. I speak strength into your house. I speak strength into your mind. I speak strength. I will see your skills. Uh, I feel like I'm rushing it too much. Paul says, strength for the inner man. Uh, the physical uh, will break down. Even after you've gone to the gym and get your six pack well toned up, that outer man is not able to withstand the fiery darts of the adversary. <laughs> but Paul says the, the inner man. Mm. The spirit that is in you uh, that make it uh, intercessions. Uh, that spirit, uh, I need you to strengthen. I got to preach. When you lay down in your bed at night and this flesh rocking with pain. You need the strength of the inner man <laughs> to say, flesh, I command you to be healed in Jesus' name. You need that inner man to encourage you when you can't make it any further. I feel the Holy Ghost. You need that strength to get you over the next bump that is in the road. You need strength. Paul says, strengthen the inner man. Somebody take your right hand and anoint yourself. I say, strength. No matter how strong we are, time will affect our very faith in God. It will wane on our faith. If we are bombarded with situations after situation after situation and it seems like nothing is happening. There comes a time. When I say I just can't do it anymore. But God have me to be here for this first night to strengthen the body. Every spirit of discouragement, every spirit of weakness, every faint spirit, I rebuke it tonight and I replace it with the strength of God. We have come this far by faith. On the Lord, uh, trusting uh, in His holy words, uh, He has never failed us yet. Uh, and God says, uh, I will not fail you now. Uh, I release strength in this ministry. Two 
four more verses. Paul says that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith that he be rooted and grounded in love. By this shall all men know that ye are his disciples if we love one another. <laughs> but then we get to your verse. <laughs> Paul, after talking about the wealth of the believer and telling us about uh, how we should live uh, and how we should walk, uh, Paul now gives us uh, uh, what is called a doxology uh, in the Greek. <laughs> He gives us the doxology and Paul begins it by saying now. You see that word now deals with the present. It deals with an immediate um, immediate now, right now. Um, it means it eliminates uh, uh, tomorrow. Uh, Paul says now. Uh, look at your neighbor and say now. Uh, this ministry uh, is going to expand uh, now. Uh, God uh, is blessing us uh, now. Uh, God uh, is delivering us uh, now. Uh, God uh, is making a way uh, now. Uh, oh God, we could spend all time uh, and now. Uh, now faith uh, is the substance uh, of things so for uh, and the evidence uh, of things not seen. Uh, now unto him uh, who is able uh, to keep us from falling uh, and to present us faultless uh, before the presence of his glory uh, with exceeding great joy uh, to the only wise God to him the glory uh, majesty dominion and power uh, for now uh, my God uh, and forevermore uh, and those, uh, but Paul elevated it uh, he now not only says now uh, but he says unto him uh, Paul now puts Christ uh, at the elevated position. Uh, he now gives him his sovereignty. Uh, he now elevates him uh, to his majesty and uh, his supremacy. Uh, he now lifts him up above dominions and kingdoms, uh, above princes and monarchs. Uh, he now says him, uh, him Jesus, uh, nobody else uh, like Jesus is able to do exceeding exceeding what your mind can imagine abundantly above all we could ask or think in this first inaugural I preach this word and you will remember it no limits no boundaries because God says uh, there is nothing uh, that I can do uh, and uh, if it's Red Sea uh, I told Moses uh, to stretch the rod uh, and it was divided uh, they came to Jordan uh, and I told the priests uh, to step in uh, with the Ark of the Covenant uh, and Jordan uh, backed up uh, if it's the woman uh, with the issue of blood uh, running for 12 years uh, she touched uh, the hem of his garment uh, and she was uh, made whole uh, what about Lazarus uh, dead and buried uh, and by now he's thinking uh, but Jesus uh, he says uh, show me 
Will you lay here? And he says, Lazarus, come forth. And Lazarus came forth. I'm talking no limits, no boundaries. Blind Bartimaeus, sitting by the wayside, he perceived, he heard that Jesus was passing. He says, Lord, O son of David, have mercy upon me. He received his sight. Lord, have mercy. The Bible talks about bitter marrow. Water could not be drinking. But Jesus caused him to pick a branch, throw it in the water, and the water was turned from bitter to sweet. Can I preach to this church? They were at a wedding in Cana, and the wine ran out. They told him, fill the water pots and draw and take to the governor. Don't taste it. Just try it and give to the governor. You would have thought that they would taste it to see first. Jesus says, what I do is well done. If I told you, draw and give it. Just draw when they tasted the wine. They said they taught that they served the best. But you leave the best for the last. Grab your neighbor hand. And say, neighbor, no limits, no boundaries. Prophesy. And said he's making a way out of nowhere. Jobs where there is no jobs. Healing where there is sicknesses. Provision where it's needed. Deliverance where it's needed. Finances where it's needed. The Lord sent me. No limits. No boundaries. A peak over praise sanctuary. Shake it, Lord. Send a miracle to this house. Send an overflow to this house. Send favor to this house. Grant this ministry favor with the community. Favor with the city. Favor with the businesses. Favor with the people. No limits. No boundaries. Favor. 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 Somebody hold your neighbor hand. Squeeze that hand. And say faith. I don't want you to let go of your hands. No limits. No boundaries. Favor with the community. Favor with the city. Favor with the businesses. Favor. Play me softly as you hold hands. No limits. No boundaries. Whoosh. About maybe two months ago, I want to close by saying this. Two months ago, we had a call concerning this gentleman who is of a different persuasion. He doesn't believe in Jesus. They worship other gods. He 
went to the doctor and the doctor told them, you don't have long to live. Cancer has taken over your body. I'm talking about no limits, no boundaries. Shataya. I told them to bring him to prior meeting. He brought his wife and his daughter. He said, I came for prior. We bind together and we command cancer to triumph. It was just last week when he went back for his checkup. The doctors opened him. They went to do the surgery. When they opened him, Pastor, they said, I don't know where. The cancer went. people don't worship Jesus it was so overwhelming that the wife called and she sent an offering for the church she says I want to thank your God for trying of cancer I'm speaking in this ministry that there is no limit to what God can do with this work. Who shun is going to take prior and fasting and waiting upon God. And you got to understand times and seasons. The Bible says the sons of Issachar had an understanding of the time to know what they ought to do. As you hold hands tonight, I want you to close your eyes. God, you plan this ministry. You've got to oversight it. You have got to bless it. You have got to provide for it. You have got to give us favor. Shana. Loose those hands. Is there anybody here that's not yet baptized? Just stuck up your head. God of love, God of power, the only reason that I'm still here.